This is Yet Another MBA GOAT, a podcast featuring conversations with the greatest of all time MBA alumni from the Naveen Jindal School of Management at the University of Texas at Dallas. We are here to celebrate the outcomes of graduate management education and to identify remarkable examples of how the MBA program here at the Jindal School has transformed the lives of our alumni. Now, here's Lisa Schatz, Assistant Dean for the Jindal School's MBA programs. Take it away, Lisa. Hey, you guys. I am so excited to introduce Cameron Prince today, who was a 2020 graduate of the full-time MBA program and is currently at Raytheon. He does ops and supply chain in the leadership development program. Welcome, Cameron. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today, Lisa. I'm honored that you asked me to be on the podcast. Well, it's it's a nice opportunity for us to get a chance to chat, although we do see each other fairly regularly. Cameron's an active alum, and we reach out uh, often for him to either uh, talk with incoming students or come to events um, and uh, help out with our current students. So we are not strangers, um, but it is nice to have uh, a good long time to to catch up on one of the podcasts. So I've got a a whole lot of questions I want to ask about your MBA, but just to make sure that um, those listening understand kind of what your background was, because I know within the military world, there's a number of different uh, kind of experiences you can have. Fill us in a little bit about um, what your military background specifically looked like. Sure. So I attended the United States Military Academy at West Point from 2010 to 2014 and earned my bachelor's of science in physics and a commission as a second lieutenant in the army. So graduating from from West Point, I became an air defense artillery or ADA officer. So I ended up in the Patriot missile career field and Patriot missiles are a weapon system built by Raytheon Technologies. And then some some of the missiles are built by Lockheed Martin. And so for five years, I was in the Patriot career field, did my lieutenant time as a platoon leader in Patriot. So during that time, I did a nine-month deployment to Kuwait as what's called a tactical director, and that's at the battalion level of a Patriot battalion. Um, So from there, I went on and was basically a consultant for a year. I um, was, was promoted to captain and went to a division staff working for a general and a bunch of other high-ranking officers. And so that was really great experience going into an MBA. And that was my last assignment as as an active duty officer. So I I left that role, joined the Army Reserves out of Grand Prairie, and began my MBA journey. You're a little bit different from the students in, in what you were looking for, because that military background, being from West Point, that work experience really makes your job strategy and what you wanted to do with your life a little bit different. Talk about how you leveraged that to make a decision on where you wanted to go with your career. Okay, you're right. My past experience did heavily influence where I wanted to end up and my choice of universities and my my strategy in trying to get hired coming out of the MBA program. I knew when I left the army that I needed to stay involved in defense or I might regret leaving. Uh, it was a, it was a hard choice. I wasn't one of those who, who was just f- fed up and excited to get out. It was a more of a calculated decision. Uh, my career field was deployed a whole lot and I just wanted to be home more with my family, but, but I loved my job. So I wanted to stay part of the war fighting effort and knew that I had learned some valuable and transferable skills while in the military, but I didn't speak business and had no idea what goes on in the business world. So uh, that's when I started thinking, okay, maybe maybe I should get my MBA to transfer my military leadership skills into management skills that can be used in the civilian world. So the next next step was where am I going to get my MBA? So I looked at some programs in Dallas which is where my wife, Allison, and I are from and where we wanted to return as civilians. UTD was just the natural choice, super high ratings, close to where we grew up and where we wanted to live and 
had a track record of placing students in places I wanted to go. So it was a pretty easy decision for me. And then as far as my strategy for, for outplacement, you know, finishing the MBA and finding my full-time role, that kind of just worked itself out as well through the program. There were networking opportunities throughout the year and a half that I was in the full-time cohort. And early on, I met some folks who were alumni and working at Raytheon and built a relationship with them. And they mentored me on some classes I should take and some things I could do to be more competitive and even how to write my resume. And with their coaching and with the MBA offices coaching, I was able to build a competitive package, I guess. And so I was thankful and happy to to get the offer from Raytheon and um, couldn't be happier. And certainly there are people out there that think, you know, they come and talk to us about the program. They're like, you know, thinking that it's somehow a disadvantage to be a veteran. And it's a surprise to them when we tell them we have so many employers at the first question they ask, do you have veterans? And that is really such a benefit in the job market, not only because of the specific skills that you bring, but the perception that those people are generally pretty disciplined and focused that they're in very high demand. So for any veterans out there, um, don't go into an MBA program thinking that you are at all behind the eight ball because you don't have corporate experience because you can get corporate experience and you have the military experience, but people from corporate can't just go out and get military experience later. So it's really a plus to go in the market and say that you, um, you know, you have both. Speaking of um, UT Dallas being the, the obvious choice, I didn't mention that you're actually back here now getting your master's. Is it in supply chain? It is. Although I, so I took a semester of classes in the fall. I took two more courses in supply chain to, I was halfway through from the MBA, Mm -hmm. right? So you've got five years of validity for your graduate courses. And after my 18 month MBA, I had half the credits required to finish the supply chain master's. Uh-huh. So I did six of those credits last semester and had a difficult time balancing my, you know, now full-time role with Raytheon and those courses. So I'm not taking any of this semester and not sure when I'll be back. But it's kind of interesting that you went out to the workforce and came back. So mo- just for the, the listeners benefit, most of our students who do a double degree do it at the same time. And by doing that, they eliminate a lot of the classes they have to take. So If you were to do both degrees completely separate, it's 53 and 36. But if you do them together, you can do them for as little as 63 credit hours. But the point is, most of our students who do that do it all at once. And I very often talk to students and I'll say, you know, you get a benefit from taking a couple of years in the workforce, seeing what you need, because you can't possibly know what skills you're going to need that you have a gap in until you're out there. And then coming back. And most of our students don't want to do that. So was that your thought process and why you didn't do the degree all together and you decided to go to the workforce and then come back and start working on those classes for your master's? My thought process was a little more nuts and bolts, just personal finances. So halfway through my MBA cohort, COVID happened and we went virtual and there was a lot of uncertainty in the job market. There were peaks and valleys early on in COVID. Businesses were still figuring out how to work from home, how to transition their workforces. And they were losing revenues, losing significant revenues and couldn't carry all their personnel anymore. So there were layoffs. There were missed internship opportunities for a lot of my classmates, uh, myself included, actually. So my class was very uncertain. We were all, I think, anxious about whether we were going to be able to get hired in a COVID environment. Uh, And then there was like a second wave where companies figured out work from home and started doing well again and needed a whole lot more people. Mm -hmm. And there was a big hiring surge. And I don't know where we are now, but that hiring uh, surge hasn't stopped. It's right. It is. It is hard to get people. Good time to be looking for work. Yeah. So towards the end of my 18 months, I left it up in the air. I went, okay, if I'm able to get this Raytheon LDP, I will graduate with the MBA. 
if I'm not able to get a role that I'm happy with by December, I'll stay five more months and get a second master's. And so that was purely just a, a cash flow decision. My wife was working, supporting us for me to go through a full-time MBA program without working on the side. I'm very grateful for that, but, but we were we were burning through savings at the same time. So it was both and I, I wanted to stop the bleeding. So I decided, okay, going to go back to work full-time and finish this master's at a later date. And now your wife is going through school and you're back to, to one income, but at least this income is a, hopefully a, a little bit better. <laughs> it's a bit better than a teaching salary. Yes, ma'am. And uh, <laughs> so we, we tag teamed out. She supported me to get my master's and and now, you know, we can do the same thing for her. I think that's a smart way to do it. You know, my husband, my husband and I got our MBA at the same time. And so that was a little bit of a challenge because I was going part-time and so that we had an income and going to school at night and he was going full-time. And so once in a while, I was like, he's got it made. <laughs> he's got it so much better than I do. But uh, but it, yeah. it worked out in the end. And I think, you know, as you go through life, you'll look back and be like, wow, I'm really glad we invested in each other and got the payoff for that. So you're not too far away from, from that. Um, when is Allison graduating? Probably about a year and a half. There's a lot of um, practicums. There's there's a lot of actual hands-on counseling experience, the number of hours you have to get yep. for, for your master's in counseling. So oh. she she'll needs be there to. before you know it. <laughs> yes. You have not, even though you've been kind of somewhat gone, you have not been gone. You've been really, you were really active in the program when you're here. You were one of our veteran student workers. We call it a GA. Um, you were a student ambassador. And you've been coming back um, ever since. You've been helping with uh, students who need help or that might be interested in Raytheon or that are veterans. Talk a little bit about um, the experience of doing all the non-academic things in in the program and after the program. Well, that's really my favorite part. I was worried leaving the Army that I wouldn't have that sense of camaraderie or the tight-knit group of friends anymore and really found you know, not a direct fit replacement at, at UTD, but I found a welcoming culture of nice people who are friends personally and professionally and want to help each other out. I benefited from that. I mentioned previously that I attribute a lot of my hiring into Raytheon to the mentorship and grooming I got from alumni at Raytheon. And I, I would love to do the same for, for others. So, uh, there's just a, a ton of stuff, a ton of different groups at UTD and within the MBA program and yeah, something for everyone. And I've enjoyed getting to know other veterans and other people interested in aerospace and defense. This episode is brought to you by the UT Dallas MBA program, top ranked nationally and in Texas. The UT Dallas MBA combines a robust core with 13 concentrations. You have an option to add a second master's degree, and your choices for that include five STEM-designated programs. The MBA program has full-time, part-time, online, and other formats. They give you flexibility to fit your MBA education into your busy schedule. The skills and training you will receive are what top employers are looking for. For more information, visit us online at jindal.utdallas.edu forward slash MBA. So what would you say looking back if you could do anything different? So there's, you know, obviously students that are prospective students will be listening to this. What advice would you give them coming into the program or even before that, even when they're thinking about a program? You know, I've, I've told students over the years many times, I don't think UT Dallas is the right program for everybody. I think every student owes it to themselves to look and and really pick the place that they feel like they fit in and they can be their best self. So even advice to students who are just starting to look, what advice would you have for them on their journey? Well, that is a great question and don't know how qualified I am to give advice, but I'll do my best. It's important to be forward looking. The MBA is going to be an important and fun experience in your life, but the goal isn't the MBA. The goal is the job afterwards. So not every program funnels students into every industry. All good schools will have an employer network that they're close with 
who's actively searching with that school for placement opportunities. And obviously different schools have different networks. So you need to ensure that attending the university where you'll get your MBA is actually going to improve your odds of getting the role you want. Because if a competing school has a better network into that industry, you're going to be competing with those students for the job you want. So the UTD MBA program excels at placing students into many different industries, but not necessarily all of them and, and not necessarily the one that you're, you're interested in. So aerospace and defense, it's Dallas. So there, there's a lot of aerospace and defense in the area. I had a pretty good idea that attending UT Dallas would open doors in aerospace and defense, which is what I wanted. So that was a big part of why it was the right choice for me. You also want to have a good time and be comfortable. So you want to look at the student body and ensure it's a place where you think you'll make friends. And I was excited that there were other veterans in the program. I do my best to have an open mind and not not label people. So I didn't want to I don't want to be one of those veterans who's just like my whole idea, my whole identity revolves around being a veteran. I, you know, I want to be a civilian now. But for over 10 years of my life, I've been in the U.S. Army and it is a big part of me, whether that's how I want to come across all the time or not. It is a big part of who I am. And I am just naturally more relaxed around other soldiers and uh, and other military service members. So I was excited that I wouldn't be the only one in a class and having to kind of keep that side of myself to myself. Make sure your program is going to help you get placed where you want to get placed and that you're going to have a good time and, and make great friends while you're there. You know, I'm going to follow up on that a little bit because I think people are going to listen to that and say, that's great advice, but how do I know what industries a, a school is strong with? So I'm going to just answer that question and say, um, the first thing you should do is call and ask. A school should be able to tell you and also say that administrators should be quick to tell you the truth. So I'll give you an example. I had somebody come talk to me not too long ago. They were interested in, in the entertainment industry. They specifically wanted to be in movie making. And I told them, you know what, if, if you're in Dallas and you have to be in Dallas, you can get an MBA, you can get all the skills that you'll need, but we don't have those contacts. So if you can go to USC or UCLA or look you know, around at more of those California schools, if you call a school and they tell you they are great at everything, they are not being honest and you don't want to be there. Um, you want to work at a school where they are really looking for the for your best. And you can ask for lists of companies that have hired your uh, MBAs out of that specific program. So be very cautious. It's very different if it's a part-time MBA program because part-time MBA uh, programs aren't required to necessarily gather the information on where their uh, students go, especially since with a part-time, a lot of them are professional and don't have any plans of leaving their company. They're trying to just get the skills to move up. So, but in the full-time world, um, you should be able to look on their website or call and get a list of companies where they have placed students in the last few years. And that, that will tell you as well. Um, but there's nothing better than talking to the people who run the program or the people who are in the program. And they really should be honest. So not every program can be everything to every student. So just ask that question and see what the answer is. I can tell you for UT Dallas, we are a very quantitative school. So pretty much anything quant-based um, or technical is where our greatest strengths are. So great programs for data analytics, for finance, for supply chain, any kind of operations. Um, consulting, healthcare. Cons consulting, big healthcare. And also um, we have some amazing opportunities for people who are into entrepreneurship and in innovation, including um, programs that you can go through where when you're in class learning how to write a business plan or a marketing plan or a funding pitch, you are working not on a kind of anonymous case, but you're working on your own proposals for your own product. So we've got a, a lot of really interesting patents that come out of UT Dallas and a, a very entrepreneurial spirit. I do wish I'd taken one of those classes. That's one one thing I would do differently. I, I thought at the time, well, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I want to go work at a big company. So I, you know, you don't have just endless classes to endless credits to take. You you take the ones that are gonna get you where you need to go. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't prioritize taking any of the entrepreneurial classes. And now I have some ideas on something relatively, you know, small time for me that I could just do in the evening and make some separate income. And like, I wish I'd taken one of those classes that probably would help me get set up. You know, there is so much stuff around entrepreneurship here. And they, I know that they do some things for alums. I think it's probably worth talking to Paul Nichols, who heads all that up. I know that there's one competition they have where you can submit your idea and they've opened that up to alums. I think it's a $10,000 or $20,000 prize for alums. So uh, so it might not be too late for you. Well, awesome. Thank you. So Cameron, you you went into a leadership development program. I've been, I'm a big fan of those. And I like the idea that students go into an environment where the company is investing in you. And, um, you know, it's almost like going to school again, but you're getting paid for it um, because you really are in a phase where it's all about your learning uh, other than what you're contributing to the company. So can you talk a little bit about leadership development program, what it is, what rotations you're doing and kind of what the plan is when you rotate out at the end? Absolutely. And that's good timing because I just learned some some new things this past week about my leadership development program. So primed and ready to talk about it. So LDPs are rotational programs, usually in a big company that get new employees who have some experience already exposure to different aspects of the company in preparation to compete for higher levels uh, of position within that company. So it takes understanding different parts of the company at a decent level to be able to make decisions at a, at a higher level. Um, but it means you're not becoming the absolute subject matter expert in any one of those fields. So I've spent the last 14 months as a material program manager, which is part of the supply chain function at Raytheon Technologies. And in June, I will be switching to another role, probably in operations. So I'm in the operations and supply chain management, leadership development program, super long uh, phrase, I guess, for, for what it is, but we just all call it the ops and supply chain LVP. And there are two flavors of that for, for new hires. There's what they call an experienced track and an early career track. So the experienced track is for MBAs and the early career track is for undergraduates. And so they're both two years long, and at least at at RTX, Raytheon Technologies, for the early career track, it's three eight-month-long rotations. And for the experienced track, it's two 12-month-long rotations from June to June, two years from then. So because I finished my MBA in December... I asked if I could start early and they said, yes, if you're wondering why I said I've been in this role 14 months. So I'm doing an an 18 month rotation and a 12 month rotation, but typically it's 12 and 12. So because I did supply chain in this role, I should do operations in the next one. And then the LDP is over and some folks off rotate into whichever one they liked better. And some continue sort of continue the LDP for themselves by continuing to rotate voluntarily, uh, applying to internal positions in the company. And and that's my plan. So finance was one of my favorite classes. And I would like to do a finance role, which, you know, is outside the scope of an ops and supply chain LDP. So done supply chain, going to do ops, finish the LDP, And then I'd like to do a year or two in finance and a year or two in contracts in preparation for hopefully bigger and better things. Wow. And when you look at someone who's really high level in a company like a a Raytheon or any big company and the people who make it really to that, that C level, those are, are not generally people who came up the ranks through one set function. They're not people who came in as a finance analyst and moved up to manager, director, VP, they tend to be people who have worked in multiple areas around the company because they're making such high level decisions that really affect, you know, operations and marketing and PR and, and all these different functions. So 
I, I can't even imagine with your West Point background and then, you know, those years of rotations moving around to those areas, how well positioned you'll be for um, higher level leadership at that point. Well, I hope so. That's nice of you to say that. And, um, you know, maybe one of these rotations, I'll just go, wow, this is awesome. And I, I do want to just deep dive into finance and and move up that functional area. That could definitely happen. And I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But at least for now, being only one rotation in, my plan is to keep rotating. Well, what a what a fun uh, situation to be in where you're getting to learn different things, but you know the future is kind of could be anything, and and in such a great company. So we're we're looking forward to see where you go in the next couple of years. We have big plans for you, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you know, as you move up and become more successful, we will not hesitate to take credit for all of it. Certainly. Feel free. I wear my UTD sweatshirt all the time on my Zoom calls. So I'm spreading the brand awareness across right now. That's, that is great. We need people like you reminding the world that we have great students. So thank you for doing that. Of course. It's a comfortable sweatshirt. <laughs> well, thanks for chatting with me, Cameron. It was nice catching up. It has been great catching up. And thank you again. Really honored that you wanted me to be on the podcast and as you said, you know, still around and always look forward to, to seeing you in the office at UTD. We are so glad you could join us today and hear about the journey of yet another MBA GOAT. For me, my MBA was truly transitional, as it is for so many of our students. If you're wondering where an MBA can take you, reach out to us and let's talk about you. Email us at mba at utdallas.edu and feel free to ask for me. Thanks for listening to this episode of yet another MBA GOAT podcast. Join us online at mbagoat.com to find episode notes, links, and more. Be sure to subscribe to yet another MBA GOAT podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review. That will help spread the word about the podcast and the Jindal Schools MBA programs. To learn more about the Jindal Schools MBA programs, go to jindal.utdallas.edu forward slash MBA. MBA.